The people in charge of the military hospitals in Europe admit that there have been problems relating to the reductions, but insist that military medical personnel are among the last to leave when bases close. And despite some of the cutbacks in medical availability, medical officials expect to wind up with more military family doctors for those remaining than before the reductions. All of the mission changes and the reductions mean a lot of moving for people in uniform and their families, but then moving from one base to another is just another part of military life. Sergeant Rick Sarche explains what it's like for an entire group of people from RAF Alconbury in the United Kingdom to make yet another move. The job of the 7th SOS often takes its members away from home, which has been RAF Alconbury. Soon, though, members of the 7th Special Operations Squadron and their parent organization will move to RAF Mildenhall. This move is necessary because of the continued reduction and realignment of the Air Force. Tech Sergeant Michael Flanders moved his wife and three boys to Alconbury in November of 1992. He says the move to Mildenhall makes sense. But uh, that's the, my single greatest concern, is when we get there, housing, schooling, stuff like that. Although the relocation isn't scheduled to be completed until March 1995, quality of life and other issues are already being addressed in this building at RAF Mildenhall. Lieutenant Colonel Sandra Wall says all levels of the Air Force in Europe want this transition to be as smooth as possible. We understand that those folks have moved two or three times in the last two years, and we're very, very sensitive to, to, to all of those things. So we, we welcome them with open arms and tell them, don't be concerned. Leadership is, is, is in charge, and they're taking control of it. With people at Mildenhall working on the upcoming move, members of the 7th SOS can remain focused on their job. Sergeant Rick Sarche, Air Force News, RAF Mildenhall, the United Kingdom. Yet another example of the busy time, and the man he replaces takes over a new job just created. Major General James Chambers has commanded 17th Air Force since 1989. During that time, the people of the 17th have played a role in every major operation in their hemisphere, and that commitment continues. Right now, our jets are enforcing UN-mandated no-fly zones over Iraq and Bosnia-Herzegovina while C-130s are en route to Sarajevo, and others are prepared to act should it become necessary. General Robert Oakes, the commander of the Air Forces in Europe, says he's pleased with the job General Chambers has done. He says that's why a new job has been created for him. General Chambers will become Director of Contingency Operations for USAFE. This is a great vote of confidence, not just from the United States Air Force, but it's really an international choice of a leader. The new commander, Major General Eugene Santorelli, is no stranger to the 17th. He learned the legacy of the command during assignments at Spangdalem and Bitburg Air Bases in Germany. Pride in the past, a focus on the future, a commitment to mission, realistic training, and the welfare of our people. General Santorelli says he plans to keep 17th Air Force on that course even as his command shrinks from more than 26,000 people to about 18,000 with less than two wings of fighters and a wing of airlift aircraft. General Chambers' new office is at Ramstein Air Base, but he'll be spending a lot of time on the road coordinating contingency operations like Operation Deny Flight. Members of the House Armed Services Committee had some encouraging words for people in uniform when they visited Ramstein last month. It was part of a fact-finding trip involving the military in Europe. Sergeant Daniela Marcus was on hand for the visit and talked to one of the key committee members. The group was headed by Missouri Congressman Ike Skelton, chairman of the House Subcommittee on Military Forces and Personnel. Skelton, a strong supporter of a military pay raise, believes a 2.2% increase in January is a sure thing. I don't see anyone uh, in Congress uh, or the administration, uh, now that we're on the road to getting the uh, military pay raise, uh, being an obstacle. Uh, no, I think everyone uh, understands uh, that those of you in uniform are performing extremely well. Congressman Skelton says the size and quality of the military go hand in hand. There's some people that uh, think we can do it with a much lesser force. 
uh, I happen to feel that you need a good size force as well as quality people, and you have to keep people trained. The future size of America's military is still a question mark. As a result, many in uniform are rejoining the civilian population. How far will the reduction go is a question Congressman Skelton wants answered. The uncertainty causes a lot of good people, quality people, uh, to consider getting out. We can't do that. You, you don't uh, stop uh, aggressors and you don't win conflicts with second-rate people. So I'm deeply concerned. Of course, this is my subcommittee. But I spend a lot of time, uh, uh, frankly, worrying about keeping not just numbers up, but the quality of uh, young men, young women in uniform. The delegation also stopped in Macedonia, where U.S. troops are involved in the U.N. peacekeeping mission to keep the troubles in Bosnia from spreading and in Ireland for talks with members of the Irish Army about peacekeeping strategies. Sergeant Daniel Marcus, Air Force News, Ramstein Air Base, Germany. Some changes in the Air Force weight and fitness program will require women in uniform to lose less body fat each month. Those changes will also give women more time after their pregnancies to meet the standards. Women on the weight management program now need to lose only 1% of body fat, or 3 pounds a month, to be considered making satisfactory progress. Also, women won't have to meet the weight and fitness standards until 6 months after their pregnancy.